Winter Jam is back. I it's know. Back. I can't wait. Oh, man. It's, it, it, it feels like it did. I think it happened last year, just not the whole tour, man. This is not your not your first time on Winter Jam. But, man, with, with only half of the tour happening last year, touring back in arenas this year, Talk to me about how excited you are and how much it means to be on this on this run with so many friends of yours. Man, I I really can't wait. Um, I was actually a part of just one weekend of Winter Jam this year, and it was it was just like a, a teaser, just a little <laughs> taste oh, of man. what it was like to be back. So I, I can't wait to be back. And like you said, so many of my friends are out on on the road touring and and the Skillet guys, and yeah. um, KB, and, and um, we're actually really excited. We're going to be on a bus with IMA, and uh, I've done a few shows with them, but don't know them super well, so excited to make some new friends. Nice. Um, so it's going to be it's going to be so fun. We're, we're looking forward to it. it. It almost feels like an extension of the drive-in tour you did earlier this year, because you toured with Skillet earlier, earlier this year, and you yeah, guys are back, right. on, back on the road with them. Now, what better way to kick off 2022 than to go out with a band that you just toured with that, but it, it was a drive-in tour. This is arenas, but um, one thing that I really, really find really cool about this is, you know, just like Skillet, you have a huge following, not just in the Christian market, but in the mainstream secular market as well. And so there's a huge evangelism opportunity that normally wouldn't be there with Winter Jam sometimes because you'll have a lot of maybe non-Christian music bands coming to Winter Jam to see you, to see Skillet, and uh, even KB. Um, yeah. And it, it's really cool. Is that something you guys think about and really take into consideration when it comes to putting this together? You know, um, I, I'm not I'm not a part of the Winter Jam committee, but it, it does appear that way this year, even with Torrent, You know, he's had some mm-hmm. amazing opportunities. Oh, yeah. He was just at the Thanksgiving way. parade. Yeah. So, you know... Um, that's the heart of winter jam is evangelism mm-hmm. anyway, whether it's, you know, a little more like Christian music leaning artists yeah. or, or people who kind of bridge that gap like skillet or KB mm-hmm. or Torrent or myself even. Mm-hmm. Um, but that's our heart is we want people to know Jesus, but at the very least we want to deposit some hope into people, mm-hmm. especially during a season where it doesn't seem like there's a lot of hope to go around. So um, yeah. that's that's my personal mission for this year on Winter Jam. It's like, man, I want to leave people more hopeful than they were when they walked in to this building. And uh, we're so excited to be part of, like you said, such a great lineup, great crew of people. Yeah. Uh, it's going to be fun. It, it's one of the best lineups they've put together, which says a lot because they've had some banger lineups over the years. But this is one of the yeah. most stacked lineups and bills there's ever been and i feel like there's less artists and bands on this one so maybe you guys will get a little bit more set times this time around so yeah we we uh it's actually one of the longer sets i've ever had on winter jam so i'm nice. really excited about that um just not feeling like uh commercial <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> i feel like we actually get to settle into a groove for a second um yes Still not a ton of time, but um, we're going to make the most of it, and uh, it's going to be so fun. Man. Oh man, cannot wait! Yes, plus you, you with, with the with the with Winter Jam being the arena tour and just how big it is, you get to put a little bit more into like the production and the actual performance itself. You know, you get to bring a little a lot more elements and stuff into it sometimes too, which is a lot more fun for the fans too. So that that's one thing that that I'm looking forward to is just like the the spectacle of Winter Jam because. Good God, it's a whole nother animal than just a regular and I tour. completely agree, man. Um, we we did some tours this fall that were amazing tours, but yeah. it, it's not, like you said, it's not the spectacle that Winter Jam is. They just go all out, and I'm so thankful that they do. Um, yeah. I'm, I'm not necessarily at a point in my career where I can go out and do an arena tour with that amount of production, um, yeah. but it's been it's so fun whenever you get the opportunity to do that, and, and um we're definitely going for it. So <laughs> yeah, well, it's going to be fun. One thing that I love about Winter Jam is, um, you know, it's like the 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 current, like the the heavy hitters now mixed with the, the future heavy hitters of Christian music. Like that's where Ke- for King and Country got, you know, was early on. Yeah. You um, and just God, four, five, six years ago, 
that was you. You know, you were a newer yeah. artist making their way up. Uh, you mentioned the I Am They a little bit ago. Who are some of the newer, younger artists that you're really looking forward to, not just seeing on stage, but, you know, conversing with and breaking bread with and getting in, you know, devotion time and all that stuff with backstage, getting to know them on just a personal level too. That's one thing people don't always think about as far as fans is like the backstage stuff and the, you know, the congregating with other bands and artists. Cause it's, it's like a family you're with these guys for like three or four months. hundred percent. Um, you know, like we, like you said, I mean, these are a lot of my friends. Um, mm-hmm. I've toured with KB before. I've mm-hmm. toured with Skillet or Torn before. And, yeah. Um, I've never toured with I Am They, so I'm excited to get to know them. Um, but I feel like this tour is going to feel like a reunion. And mm-hmm. I, I feel like um, there are those opening slots, and I'm so excited to get to know those artists as well. That's always fun. Um, yeah. Seeing there, It's like I used to be this guy, and I'm not saying that we're jaded now, but we used to be like, you know, bright-eyed, bushy-tailed <laughs> artists, yeah. right? You know, yeah. and, and especially with a tour like Winter Jam, like, I, I grew up going to Winter Jam, so I yeah. remember my first Winter Jam tour just, like, <clears throat> taking every single second in and just like, wow, like, this is the coolest thing ever. I still feel that way, by the way. Oh, but, yeah. Um, it's uh, it's going to be cool being around that excitement mm-hmm. again um, and remembering what it was like, but I'm excited to take – some of these relationships deeper, especially after a kind of a tough season, like yeah. the last couple of years, um, had the opportunity to, um, to have time with John and Corey and, and Seth and Jen from mm-hmm. Skillet out um, earlier this year on the drive-in tour. But even just KB, he's a, a wise guy. Yeah. Um, and uh, a really, um, yeah, he just carries a lot of wisdom. And Torrin's the same way. So I'm excited to see their perspective on things. I try to be a sponge right. out on the road and learn as much as I can. And um, it's going to be a lot of fun, man. I just, yeah, every, every new thing that we talk about, it just gets me more pumped for it. <laughs> I'm so ready, man. And you guys are coming to Indy, man. I'm so excited for that. But um, you are now on Atlantic Records, spent a lot of time on Sparrow and all that stuff. You're on a, on a more mainstream major label now, but does that change the way you approach writing or anything like that? How has it been being on Atlantic? Because Skillet's on Atlantic, so you got label mates on the road with you this year. Um, but yeah. like you do every time you're on Winter Jam. But how, is, how has it been transitioning to Atlantic this time around, or is it business as usual? You know, um, it's not so much changed the place I'm writing from, but it's maybe changed um, the face that I picture – um, of who I'm writing for. Okay. Um, you know, being on Sparrow, um, I love those guys. I love Capital. Um, I still mm-hmm. do. So that was not a um, a bad ending. Right. Writing means it was just kind of a new season, a new chapter. And um, but it was definitely more targeting Christian audiences, and and that was kind of the goal at the end of the day. But mm-hmm. with Atlantic, there there are more Christians in the world than there are not. Uh, or there, I'm sorry, vice versa. There are more non-Christians in the world than there are Christians, and sure. and I'm like, okay, so how do we reach those people? Um, how do we break outside of the four walls of the church? And um, yeah. it take it takes more than just good music, right? Um, there has to be a message that's palatable for both, and it, mm-hmm. it can be a really hard line to walk sometimes. Um, yeah. I'm by no means wanting to jump ship or abandon Christian music. I love it, and I believe in it. It has purpose. And, yeah. Um, but at the same time, I would love to extend a little further um, to people who would never step foot in a church and yeah. give them a song that even if they just like the beat of it, if it stops there, that's fine. Let's do that. Or let's, you know, just deposit a little bit of hope into them where we can, um, even if they don't realize that Jesus is at the center of that hope. Um, I think Skillet's the same way. They do such a great job of that. Yes. Um, yes. So I, uh, I'm trying to, um, as I write, picture that person who may not necessarily go to church, but they need Jesus just as much as I need Jesus, you know? So, um, it's been a really cool season. That's kind of how I felt on American Uh Idol as well. Yeah. Had an opportunity to reach people outside of the church. And so I'm excited, um, (laughs) to now be able to do more of that. Um, and Atlantic has been amazing. So Mm -hmm. supportive. Yeah. Um, yeah, excited to, for you guys to hear what we've been working on. Oh, I love it. 
so fun. Well, and that's one thing I asked John from Skillet about years ago is, you know, do you see yourself ever doing another praise, uh, another worship album like they did in like 0203? It's like, I loved it, but we're more about evangelizing and reaching the lost in the, the church has been reached. It's good to keep them fed, but I want to go out and reach the people that have never, you know, heard it never would never. And that's what we're doing. So I love, yeah. I love that you said that. Cause that is absolutely amazing. From what I understand, Atlantic doesn't try to change like your message of what you're doing and stuff. They, they, they let you do what you do and they just, they, you know, to a degree, but you know, that, that is just awesome. Cause I, that is like the, I feel like that's something that gets lost a lot along the way when it comes to um, the, the church sometimes now. So it's awesome that you're trying to reach the people that would, you know, like myself, I don't go to church. I come to winter jam, go to Christian concerts, listen to Christian music, but yeah, yeah. you know, it's that there's a population that needs it, man. hundred um, percent. I agree know? with you. Yeah. 100%. So 2022, Winter Jam is going to be over in like March or April or so. Are we looking at, it's been what, by then four or five years since Identity? Or are we looking at, an, at finally another full length Colton Dixon album? Because you've been releasing singles and the EP and stuff, but yes. more full uh, length. Man, I so hope so. We, uh, we have a song that we're real excited about right now. Um, it kind of all centers around do we have the song? You know, right. and um, yes. we're in a singles market. We've been in a singles market for the last few years. Mm-hmm. Um, but if we can get, man, I, I think at least two songs that everyone's like, man, we are so excited about this. I think that's going to be the, the obvious next step. We yeah. have, man, I wrote 70, 80 songs for that EP. Oh, God. And there and there are still so many of those songs that I keep coming back to. Like, man, I really want people to hear this song or I think people need to hear this song because of the message or man how this song is too good to be <laughs> chilling in this you know hidden section in my phone right, like right. okay can we please just release it it doesn't have to be a single you know whatever right um so I think we're we're all like we're in singles mode right now um trying to find the best song um or write the best song that we possibly can yeah. um for radio and you know that whole political, you know, gamut yeah. of sorts, but um, yeah, it's coming soon. Well, we are working towards it. I don't know the timeline yet, um, but it's coming. Well, if if you've got like the song and you love it so much, the labels like yeah, just do what John did with the the uh, the, the the rock breakdown at the end of the resistance. Just sneak it in there and not tell the label. It's just like a hidden track type thing and just like get yours over and like everyone will That it. is hilarious. <laughs> I actually didn't know that. I yeah. That song. Yeah. He's like, but oh, they did he's like, they didn't want me to do the breakdown. I snuck it in. They couldn't do anything about it. I win. I was like, that's the most John Cooper thing ever, man. That's great. That is the most John Cooper <laughs> thing ever. Man, You're absolutely right. I absolutely love Made to, um, made, made to Fly, dude. It's uh, It's oh, got every you. element that I love uh, just about your music and just in general, dude. I love the song. Um, hopefully, you know, there's more stuff like that on what's to come. And, uh, dude, Winter Jam coming to Indianapolis, Fort Wayne.